Hey, it's Dry Bear, and today I'm going to give you 10 tips to instantly up your game in the brand new Sons of the Forest. This includes ways to find resources, replenish resources, stay alive, and win combat encounters. If you found value in this video, leave a like down below. It helps me out tremendously. Subscribe for more gaming content, and as always, if you need anything from me, questions, comments, or otherwise, you'll find me live every day on twitch.tv forward slash Dry Bear come by and say howdy. And the first tip is once you unlock the shovel, and I'm assuming if you're here on a tips video, you're not trying to avoid progression spoilers. There is a shovel in the game. It's a key item that does allow you to progress. But one thing you may not know about the shovel is it actually generates infinite resources as you dig. So you can find any spot on the ground to dig. And as you dig around, you'll find things like small rocks, which can make stone arrows. You'll find watches, you'll find coins, you'll find all kinds of things and it just randomly pops up as you dig. You'll find tons and tons of resources. So if you're in a pinch and you need stuff, just turn down and start digging and you'll find tons of things that you might find, uh, even like cat food, prescription drugs for healing. There's tons of stuff just buried in the ground. Don't know why, but it's there. The next tip is something that I see a lot of players skip right over, but you can actually zoom in and out your GPS tracker by using the middle mouse button. This allows you to cycle through zoom options on your map and this is awesome for not only seeing further away to see where you are on the island and points of interest you may want to explore but also for zooming in to see what's exactly next to you when you're trying to get to a marker or to see what's on the map or finding water or anything else above so just cycle through this using middle mouse button and it gives you that option to have various looks on your map the next tip is save for sharks enemies can't swim so if you're in trouble or someone's chasing you you're, you're mobbed by a whole bunch of cannibals or mutants, your best bet is to go to the water. So not only are the uh, avoidant of water, you can use water as an obstacle to uh, get away from them or to split up groups that may be chasing you, but they actually, if they get into water that is deep enough for them to start swimming, they'll instantly drown. And this works in caves as well. So if you can lead large groups of mutants into puddles, they'll chase you into the water and they'll get stuck or they'll just drown because they don't know how to swim. They just can't. So it's an easy way to kill off large scores of enemies uh, as you run into problems or run into combat options. The next tip is that birds often gather around water. So if you're looking for feathers or the larger birds like the seagulls for meat that you can eat, go near water. There's plenty of lakes and rivers that the birds will come near and they'll land and they're very easy to pick off to get feathers. If you're having trouble chasing down birds, especially if you're new and you're trying to look for those feathers and you're trying to swing at them, just come near water, open water, and you'll see tons and tons and tons of birds and you can take out with a spear or a bow and kind of stack things together. The next tip is that resources that need to be replenished, like putting batteries into your flashlight or putting air into your uh, rebreather, those will happen automatically as long as you have extra in your inventory. So if you're worried, I was worried and I tested this just to make sure, but if you're underneath the water with a rebreather and you run out of oxygen, but you have air tanks in your inventory, It'll automatically refresh while you're in the water. And same thing goes for the batteries in your flashlight. Those will auto refresh. Uh, if you have the flashlight out or the rebreather out and you have re restore in your inventory, it'll replenish on its own. The next tip is that when you're playing the second time around or the third time, whatever it is for you, you can skip cutscenes. There's no prompt for it. It doesn't show anything until you press the key, but you can press and hold S, which will skip right through the cutscene if you don't want to do it so that you can very easily get to the new playthrough that you're trying to do. The next tip is that when it comes to combat, stuns and stagger are your best friend. They'll take tons of damage if you're unprepared or not used to the melee combat, the ranged combat. But keep in mind that all enemies in the game can be stunned or staggered depending on what you do. If you have a ranged weapon, shooting them in the head, even if they don't die, if they're like a high tier enemy, they can survive being shot in the head, especially if you're playing on hard, uh, then you can actually just shoot them in the head to knock them over or stun them down. And then if you also use blunt weapons or heavy weapons like melee weapons and you hit them in the head or do a, a heavy attack, you can stagger them, which stuns them, or you can knock them down, which can completely take them out on the ground. And it gives you a nice edge in the fight because as you can continue to do this, you can just pound on them and punish them 
without having to take any extra hits while you're in the combat state. The next tip is if you're looking for quick armor, one of the easiest ways to get armor is to either farm hide from deer and moose and put that with cloth or to just take bodies and burn them. You can start a fire, put a body of any kind onto the fire. It'll burn and turn into a bunch of bones and you can use that bone to make bone armor very rapidly and very freely, especially when you're out in the world hunting and, and exploring, you can find ways to replenish your armor using bone very easily. The next tip is if you're stuck in the story progression. I've seen people say that they don't really know what to do next, or they're worried about uh, what they could do to progress the story. They've kind of, they felt like they've done everything, but they're stuck needing key items. The tips I'll give you is that you want to go to the purple icons on your map. Those give you one-time bonus items that will be useful for your story. They're optional, but you can do them once. And once you collect the beacon that's at that spot, the icon will disappear. You could also go to the caves marked on your map, which have this little cave icon. Some of them are useful and just loot. Some of them have key items in them and depends on which one you go in, which matters. And then if you're looking for main story progression, that's gonna be the green dots on your map. That is the main story progression. Those are very important points of interest. Some of them, in fact, most of them, require either a key card or a key item like a shovel or a rope gun in order to progress and get the items you need to go into that area. So you are encouraged to explore the whole island, but if you're stuck and wondering what to do, clear out the purple icons, go to the caves and look for key items, use those key items to explore the green dots, and then once you've explored all the green dots, you'll have beaten the game. So the green dots are your primary end game main objective. Just make sure that you're collecting key items to go about with that. And lastly, the last tip is that resources respawn. There's a reason why these brown boxes and the suitcases and the containers are contained like this until you open them. And that's because they are replenishable. So you'll be able to break these, go to a camp, loot the whole camp, get everything you can from it. And then you can pick up lots of other stuff going on. You can open the boxes, break whatever else is there collect the loot, and then after some amount of time in game, you'll be able to collect those again. So don't feel like if you, you, you'll you harvest the land for all it's worth, it will continually replenish as time goes on. So you can revisit camps you've already cleared to get more materials that you might need for crafting and other things. And I'll leave you with one bonus tip because it might be clever use of game mechanics. It might just be an unintentional effect. So it could not, it could change in the future depending on how you look at it. But currently in the early access state, you can Skyrim climb walls by spamming spacebar. So if you need to get up somewhere, you can just spam spacebar by going along the curvatures and working your way up. And you can also do the same thing to prevent your fall by going off a ledge and then holding into the wall. You'll catch yourself slowly as you go down towards the bottom, which is useful. And on top of that is if you have uh, unlocked the, sh the sled, which you can craft using the 3D printer, uh, currently has no fall damage on it, so you can go to high ledges. If you want to get down from a high ledge, you can jump and activate the sled, and you'll prevent yourself from taking fall damage, and then you can get off the sled and be good to go. So those might change in the future, depending on how the devs look at it, uh, but it is a bonus tip for you. So those are the tips I got for you on Sons of the Forest. I hope you have a wonderful time. I have a beginner's guide if you're looking for a walkthrough of the gameplay mechanics. And as always, if you have any questions or comments for me, you'll find me live every day on twitch.tv forward slash drybear come by and say hello. If you enjoyed yourself today, leave a like down below. You can support me and my work on Patreon and view Patreon exclusive content, link in the description. Thank you so much for tuning in and I'll see you in the next one.